Uh, so hello everybody thanks for giving me this opportunity and platform to share my experience i am going to talk about fallback mechanism for ui automation in desktop flow before i begin i like to give a quick introduction my name is mani solanki i am a tech enthusiast with vast experience in microsoft platforms technology stack i specialize in designing and implementing solution using low code tools especially in power automate and power apps during this session i will cover the most common problem experienced during ui automation next we will discuss about the solution and underlying technique post that we will cover the benefit of setting up the fallback feature after that we'll discuss how screen resolution impact the, uh, the fallback mechanism then we will jump on the hands on session to cover the end to end use case and lastly we will cover the list of known issues and limitation the most common problem we face in ui automation are when underlying application that is set up or provision environment especially in dev or test has different classes or identifier for ui element as compared to production environment so when we push desktop flow in production the desktop flow will not able to identify those ui elements and will ultimately fail secondly we have observed as sometime post update of power platform app the desktop flow fails to identify the ui elements the second scenario this happens on random basis uh, coming to the solution some of the solution are enabling image fallback feature on the right side we can see image fall image as fallback button in the selected design window we will cover the details later in the demo the image fallback feature internally use image recognition technique with this technique the flow captures an image of ui element and using that image it searches for a ui element on the screen at run time on finding that image it returns the screen coordinates we can perform various action like button click uh, keystroke press with the help of those coordinates on the screen so this is how uh, image fallback feature works now comes the benefits uh, the key benefits of fallback mechanism are first of all it is a reliable solution for ui automation that reduce the risk of error at run time this also reduce the delay caused by missing elements setting up fallback uh, feature improves the efficiency of business and thereby saves the time and money the screen resolution play a vital role here uh, if desktop flow running on machine having a different screen resolution it may result in failure the chances of failure are very high in case of unattended mode implementation in at unattended mode the desktop flow runs in the background and sign into the machine with a default screen resolution as image fall back works on the concept of identify the image on the screen so desktop flow running in unattended mode may not able to locate the image due to different screen resolution so to uh, mitigate that risk uh, we have three methods to adjust the screen resolution so first one is we can use get screen resolution and set screen resolution resolution action in the desktop flow to adjust the screen resolution and next uh, method is we can override by editing window registry so we can navigate to power automate desktop window registry enable screen resolution enable key set it to 1 and then adjust the width and height of the screen uh, to get the correct screen resolution the screen resolution set using window registry will persist so every time a desktop flow runs it signs it sign in uh, it sign in into with the screen resolution mentioned in the windows registry also the value of window registry will not be overwritten if power automate desktop app is updated the last method is we can edit ui flow service config file so this config file is present in the power automate desktop installation folder in config file we can locate the screen resolution setting 
and enable screen default uh, resolution enable key we can set it to true and also adjust the value of uh, width and the height and the scale to, to match the screen resolution uh, that we required for running the desktop flow the screen resolution set using this method is temporarily and will get reset after power automate desktop app is updated to a new version so uh, i am now i switch to the live demo in this demo i will cover local run implementation and attended mode So in this use case, the bot uh, log, logs into Microsoft.com site, and then it clicks on shop uh, anchor button. And then since um, then it closed the browser because the bot don't have so much money to buy the desktop. So this is the use case. It's very simple. Let me open the desktop flow. So in desktop flow, we have three action. First, it will launch the Microsoft.com site. And the window state, it will, you know, open in maximize min window. And the next action is, as I mentioned, it will click the sh shop now anchor uh, button and navigate to the next page. And lastly, it just use a close web browser action to close that browser instance. So first, let's run this in local mode. Here you go, it launches the Microsoft.com site. Next, it will click the Shop Now button. And last, it will close this browse instance. So, so far, so good. So let's uh, explicitly make this selector, you know, uh, invalid by giving the wrong name. So next, so this Shop Now 1, 2, 3, it, it will not able to, you know, locate on the page. So Let's run now. Definitely this time it will fail to locate this uh, anchor tag and the flow will return an error. Here you can see the error says it is not able to, you know, uh, find this anchor tag with a text shop now one two three four. So this is uh, where uh, image as fallback feature comes to the comes to the rescue. So we will edit the selector, and there you can see image as a fallback feature. So we just click it. So what it does, it it goes to the parent page, and it will, uh, you know, ask to capture the image of this button which for which we have a you know invalid selector yeah so it has captured the image now and what other operation we can perform is we can repair an image so later uh, let's say the developer of that microsoft.com site it has it, they have changed this text to some else some uh, you know something like you know, buy, buy later or something like that, then we can repair that image. We can test that image and obviously we can rename and delete. So now in the default selector, we have an invalid text. So it should fail as we have shown in the last run, it failed uh, to identify this. But now we have set up, you know, image fallback mechanism. So now it should not fail. Uh, because uh, now it 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 uh, it will identify the failed selector using an image on the screen. So let's run this time. Here you go. It launches the portal, and now using image recognition technique, it identifies the invalid selector. So see. Now it has able to, you know, uh, handle those uh, errors by setting up the fallback mechanism. 
so let this so this is the local run scenario let me save this desktop flow now i will trigger the same uh, desktop flow from the cloud in attended mode so this is the cloud flow it is a manual trigger flow and here you can see the run mode is attended and i have already uh, set up the machine connection with this uh, action and now uh, we we have selected image fallback demo desktop to trigger from the cloud so let's test it it will it will uh, make a connection desktop uh, connection and then when i click run flow it will run now it will take some time to connect with the machine uh, the cloud flow will connect to the machine and then it run the desktop flow so it takes some seconds uh, in connecting to the machine is where we need the jeopardy music right da, na, 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 na. <laughs> so manesh this would require this re what you're doing right now sh is using the extra licensing right you need the uh special license to run desktop flows from the cloud uh yes you need a uh, you know a power automate license uh sorry uh power uh, power process license so now with they have you know simplified the licensing it is free uh, premium and then we have hosted uh, uh, you know hosted uh, machine licenses and uh, this unattended licenses so it comes under premium yes you are right gotcha thank you even if you see this diamond, you know, uh, symbol, so it, it is a premium. I have used premium. So it has ran successfully, as you can see. Uh, so fallback uh, mechanism works even when we, you know, trigger this uh, desktop flow from, from the cloud. So I can show you the logs, window logs. So it has run one minutes ago. Let me open. Let's see this action logs. So it launches the browser, then click on the web page and close the web browser. So this is how you know we can set up the fallback mechanism for invalid selector for UI elements. For unattended run, I've already covered how we can you know uh, adjust the screen resolution so uh, the screen resolution played a very important role because if you see here uh, if you have a low screen resolution the even the Im uh, bot will not able to find that anchor tag image on this page so it is uh, you know recommended or it's a best practice to set the correct screen resolution in unattended mode unattended mode is there or you know desktop flow runs in the background so this is about the demo i'm going back to the slide so let me go back to the uh, last slide which covers the known issues and limitation of image fallback feature image fallback feature is not supported for a couple of actions like data extraction and web data extraction and it also does not work for certain combination of condition uh, with contains and do not contain clause for action like uh, if window contains wait for window content if web page contains and wait for web page content actions and uh, the major limitation is as this feature was introduced in version 2.0 Four, four, so it supports 2.44 and higher version. And for 
complete list of limitation limitation you can visit the link on the microsoft learn portal